Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. What's up, guys? Uh, sorry I've been slow in the videos the past uh, few days. I have felt horrible. I've just, I've been sick. So, I just started to feel better. I plan on doing stuff tomorrow, but I, I feel like watching uh, one of these videos anyway, so why not do one of the Hannibal ones and record it? That's what we're doing. Sorry if I'm not fully my usual self, but I feel like doing one. Uh, if you're new to the channel, hello, my name is Connor. I like to learn about history through YouTube recommendations. The original link to the video, top of the description below, right below that, link to the Discord. Just click on it. It'll send you right over there. Love to have you. Okay, let's do it. Been chugging water. Okay, let's go. By the way, I I was kind of judging Hannibal last episode, um, just because this is you know this is only the fourth episode uh, in the series learning about Hannibal, and uh, I forget the town name, but he seemed to just his army just seemed to slaughter uh, all men, women, and children in one of the towns to sort of send a message. But a lot of you said you know it's it's you know part of the time and it's really not anything that much out of the usual so that's fair enough um let's let's keep going he's undoubtedly a genius general this video is supported by our sponsor the great courses plus hope y'all are doing well after the defeat of Ticinus, the roman senate looks to save face by blaming gallic allies for being ineffective taking comfort in the fact that hannibal has yet to face the vaunted roman infantry Longus' arrival in northern Italy restores confidence. Hannibal now faces armies of both Roman consuls. It's early December, 218 BC. Publius Scipio's life still hangs in the balance due to wounds he sustained at Ticinus. Right, he got out but, just in time. But, ironically, his troubles are only just starting. His defeat at Ticinus has major consequences for Rome. It directly caused the garrison at Clastidium to surrender the town's massive grain depot. This strips his army of food reserves and disrupts his supply lines making any advance into enemy territory a risky venture. At the same time, Hannibal finally replenishes his own reserves, which were dwindling ever since he descended from the Alps, right until the clash at Ticinus just a few days ago. The damage to Roman prestige raises the danger of further defections. I just want to say, I can't believe he could have lost 50% of his army going through the Alps and still uh, be this capable. What's worse, Gallic tribes are flocking to join Hannibal, enthused by his ability to defeat the Romans and his softer administrative touch. Well, there you go. More men. Scipio has no option but to retreat, realizing he is deep in hostile territory. He marches to Placentia and makes camp across the Po River. Hannibal pursues and catches up two days later. Learning of his arrival, over 2,000 Gauls allied to Rome rise up in the camp and attack Roman soldiers, killing many in their sleep. Before sunrise, they cross the Trebia to join Hannibal, bringing with them the severed heads of slain Romans. Using the Gallic defection as propaganda, Hannibal makes sure to spread the word that Rome's allies are joining him en masse. I wonder, you guys, with that, you know, the severed heads and everything, you know, bringing Pompey's head over. Obviously, this is a few hundred years earlier, but you know, Pompey's head to Caesar, and a lot of other times in the in the Caesar, you know, Gallic Wars, the um, uh, that was often a thing. I, I, and I'm wondering if it was more of a intimidation factor for their enemies, or if it was more of like, well, what's the best way to show someone your allegiance and prove someone that they killed this person than to sever their head and show it to them and so i wonder how much of it is is for shock value and how much of it is just for proving 
that, hey, we killed this guy. Hannibal makes sure to spread the word that Rome's allies are joining him en masse, thereby boosting his popularity among the tribes. Scipio again moves south, not wanting to risk being caught in the open. A day later, he reaches the hills and sets up camp in a strong position, with hills protecting his flanks from cavalry attacks. Then he settles in and waits for reinforcements. By mid-December, the two consuls join forces. Discussing how to confront Hannibal, Scipio argues against taking the field, stressing the longest his troops lack experience and need additional training, having been raised less than a year ago. Longus disagrees and sets up camp a few kilometers north from Scipio's position. Just as eager to fight as Longus, Hannibal maintains his camp on the flat plain and surveys the potential battlefield west of the Trebia River. Meanwhile, he sends a raiding party to ravage the area along the river, suspecting that Gallic tribes living there, who pledged allegiance to him, are now negotiating with the Romans. This channel just superb It's battle unclear maps. if the Gauls intended to betray negotiating with the Romans. It's unclear if the Gauls intended to betray Hannibal, but with their villages now being raided, some of the tribesmen appeal to the Romans for help. Longus promptly sends 1,000 velites across the river to attack the raiders. With Hannibal's troops scattered across the area and encumbered by plunder, Roman troops start picking off small groups of Carthaginians, quickly routing the raiders. Seeing this, troops on duty outside Hannibal's camp rush to the aid of the retreating raiding party. The fighting is fierce, as both sides want to prove their superiority but the Roman Velites are soon forced into a fighting retreat. The skirmish escalates rapidly, spreading across a large area. More and more troops from each side join in. Pockets of clashes develop as neither side is able to shore up its ranks. It becomes apparent that the chaotic skirmish might turn into a full-scale battle that neither commander will be able to control. Yeah, you don't see this happen too Hannibal too takes the initiative. He stops sending more troops into the fray, trying to avoid a battle that he did not plan and could do little to influence. He then Sorry, I'm just, I'm so, I feel like I rarely see this in, I'm not just talking about the Hannibal, just in all of these uh, different historical videos, the starting as a skirmish and just keep pouring troops in and in until it looks almost like a battlefield where you usually see very well, you know, thought out, battle plans with troop movement and this just seems like it's escalating and escalating into a full-out uh, battle which I correct me if I'm wrong I, I don't think happens often in, in any of these videos I've watched oh, but he did not plan I could do little to influence he then audaciously rides out in person and rallies the scattered troops he pulls them back and arrays them in a line outside the camp the Romans advance but Hannibal restrains his men from advancing on the enemy. The Romans too halt their advance, refusing to attack the well-positioned Carthaginians, who can now be supported from the camp with projectiles and fresh troops. The day draws to a close. Oh. Hannibal demonstrates his shrewdness by not committing to an uncertain battle, and by restraining his troops, he exhibits what he would become so famous for his extraordinary ability to exercise control over his army. The Romans retire towards their camp, satisfied at scoring a victory against Hannibal's troops, their morale and confidence partially restored. Longus, who is described by sources as having an aggressive temperament, shows his eagerness to do battle as soon as possible. He won't have to wait long. I love how it shows the day and night cycles and everything. At dawn, Roman guards sound the alarm. The Carthaginians are attacking the camp. Awoken to projectiles flying over the palisades, Roman troops are ordered to get ready for battle. On empty stomachs, the men rush to form up in front of their tents in frigid conditions. Longus sends all 4,000 of his cavalry against the Numidians, closely followed by 6,000 velites. But the Numidians soon break off. As the fighting moves north, 
the fast cavalrymen engage in hit and run tactics, Longus marches out with the rest of his army to meet the enemy. Heavy infantry forms into three columns, each some 3.5 kilometers long. They lag behind the cavalry in Velites, but make steady progress. This channel is so Numidians continue to avoid a direct confrontation with the Roman cavalry in Velites. Meanwhile, Hannibal gathers his officers to lay out his plans. He offers words of encouragement and orders them to ready the men for battle. Well rested and well fed, Carthaginian troops take to the field. To the east, the skirmish continues. The Numidians find themselves backed against the Trebia. They start crossing the river as they continue to pull back, pursued by the Romans. Arriving with the infantry and eager for battle, Longus orders the army to deploy on the western bank. The three columns begin crossing, chest deep in the freezing water. Meanwhile, Hannibal sends 8,000 infantry forward to support the Numidian retreat and to provide a screen for his own deployment. He then moves his main line about one kilometer towards the approaching Romans. Across the field, Longus's army takes several hours to deploy. After fording the cold Trebia, his men are hungry, soaked, and standing in the near freezing temperature. That's one that I find is, is very difficult. I mean, maybe I'm just not catching on, but for all of these channels with these battle maps, and, and is it's really hard to think about distance and just how far each, you know, group of troops is away from each other or from the other, from the enemy. Are hungry, soaked, and standing in the near freezing temperature. The Roman consul places his velites in the front, forms his veteran infantry in the center, with Gallic and allied infantry on either side and cavalry on the flanks. Hannibal deploys his infantry in a thin line, Gallic allies in the center with Spanish and Libyan infantry on either side. Elephants flank the infantry, while the Numidian and Gallic cavalry is further wide. Around noon, Longus orders his entire line to advance, confident in the clear numerical advantage of his heavy infantry. The Romans advance in good order. The flat plain, free from any obstacles, seems an ideal battleground for their style of warfare. Meanwhile, Hannibal holds the line, letting the enemy come to him. Skirmishers get into range and begin exchanging projectiles. With Balearic slingers in their ranks, combining with javelinmen, the Carthaginians quickly get the upper hand against the Roman velites, who used up many of their javelins while pursuing the Numidian cavalry earlier in the day. Skirmishers from both sides withdraw through the gaps as the main. Sorry, don't they retrieve the javelins that that they miss with? Obviously, I mean, or even ones that they hit with that end up killing the person. I mean, it's easier said than done, and chaos of battle. Maybe it's. Difficult to find them. They used up many of their javelins while pursuing the weather. Numidian cavalry earlier in the day. Skirmishers from both sides withdraw through the gaps as the main lines of infantry close in. The heavier, more compact Roman infantry pushes the Carthaginian line back, causing heavy casualties to Hannibal's Gallic infantry in the center. On the flanks, Hannibal orders his cavalry to push forward. Some of the Roman horses become frightened by Hannibal's elephants, causing disruption within the ranks. But groups of Roman velites, specially trained to deal with elephants, mix with the cavalry and attack the terrifying beasts, wounding and killing many. Eventually, the Numidians manage to overwhelm and advance against the Roman cavalry. But despite Roman flanks being pushed back, Tell me if I'm wrong, but I just, other than the intimidation factor, which must be a big thing, I just don't see how elephants would be worth the trouble. They're just such big targets, and they're not very fast. Maybe they can carry a lot of stuff. But, or, you know, I just... Glory. But despite Roman flanks being pushed back, the Carthaginian center is crumbling. Veteran legionnaires are hacking through the Gallic infantry. Without any reinforcements available, it seems that Hannibal cannot stop the onslaught. But 
what the Romans don't know is that while surveying the field on the eve of battle, Hannibal personally picked 2,000 elite troops and positioned them in a dry riverbed. Hold on. What they don't know is that while surveying the field on the eve of battle, Hannibal personally picked 2,000 elite troops and positioned them in a dry riverbed hidden from view. Now, they emerge from the ravine with perfect timing, just as the Numidians finally rout the Roman cavalry poised to encircle the enemy. Hard pressed from the front by elephants, Carthaginian infantry and skirmishers, the wings of the Roman infantry buckle as the Numidians attack their rear. Meanwhile, Hannibal's centre collapses as the veteran Roman heavy infantry cuts right through the Carthaginian line, still unaffected by the encirclement thanks to their discipline and organisation. However, realising the battle is lost, the legionnaires retreat back across the river to Placentia, maintaining their battle formation. Roman casualties are heavy, likely around 28,000 dead or wounded, while the Carthaginian losses are much lower, between 3,000 and 5,000. Losing most of his elephants, possibly all but one, is the only major loss for Hannibal at Trebia. In just a matter of weeks, Hannibal outperformed both. I love that, the transition from the more terrain, you know, battle map up close to it shrinking into the into the larger map. I love that. Roman consuls with superior planning, near perfect coordination and control of his troops. News of the defeat rocks the Roman Senate and causes widespread panic among the population. The damage to Roman prestige persuades many more Gauls Hannibal. to join Hannibal. Hannibal. Additional attacks on Roman outposts and towns. I love that. I love how so many people who aren't directly in the war but are have to be there because of where they're situated are just sort of looking to see which way the wind is blowing to um make sure to jump on you know the the bandwagon as soon as they can cause further disruption before cold weather finally forces army posts and towns cause further disruptible additional attacks on roman outposts and towns cause further disruption before cold weather finally forces armies of both sides into winter quarters but as Hannibal's devastating campaign in Italy gains momentum, a seemingly minor event in Iberia could threaten the Carthaginian war effort in the long run. The battles of the Second Punic War belong among the greatest in history, some of which you can see on the Great Courses Plus in the highly detailed Decisive Battles of World History. A 36 lecture course that features some of the most. Just checking to see if there's any other material left. Doesn't look like it. All right. Um, I. I just feel like I I don't have the. Mental. Stamina right now to to even do another one, but I I I got through that one well. Um, yeah, he's definitely a. Uh, Ahead above the rest um, when it comes to uh, military commanders. Very impressive. And um, just like I held out with my opinion with Napoleon, with Alexander the, Alexander the Great was so far back now that I almost want to go back into him. But uh, Napoleon, Caesar, my opinion is forming about Hannibal. And uh, I'll let you know how I really feel uh, at the end. But right now, I'm not exactly sure where to pin him in terms of Shoring up support through non-military means, but maybe that's that that's what works best. So, yep, um, I'm going to do my next video. Maybe if I'm feeling all right, maybe another one tonight, uh, but most likely tomorrow. All right, hope you all are doing well. See you.